Hello, my name is Dr. Chris Hunt. The following video is designed to review the basic components of your dog's recovery from surgery. Recovery from orthopedic surgery requires attention to detail, to minimize post-operative complications, and to maximize the benefits of surgery to ensure a good recovery. If at any time you have concerns about your pet's progress, do not hesitate to call the surgical department. In general, we expect a gradual improvement in limb function, but minor setbacks due to sudden movement or slipping are common. In general, during the recovery period, controlled leash walking is good. Any other type of physical activity has the potential to be detrimental, resulting in serious or debilitating injury that can permanently affect the quality of your pet's life and require more surgery. The only additional equipment you will require is a crate and a leash. Week 1. Your dog's activity should be restricted to walking on a short lead. Walking should be slow enough that your dog bears weight on the limb with every step. Your dog should be walked three times a day for a maximum of 10 minutes. Walking on rough or slippery surfaces should be avoided. No running, jumping or playing with other dogs should be allowed. Stairs and slippery floors should be avoided where possible. If you have to negotiate stairs to get outside, use the sling. When not outside for a walk, your dog should be confined to a crate or a small room. Control in a crate is a major safety issue, allowing you freedom to leave your dog in a protected environment. A sling should be used to support your pet. For the back leg, the sling should be placed under the abdomen. For the front leg, the sling should be placed between the legs and around the back of the unoperated limb or just under the chest behind both front limbs. In male dogs, the sling may need to be removed once the dog is outside to allow for normal urination. The sling is not meant for you to completely support your dog's weight. Rather, the sling simply assists your pet in rising and helps catch them if they slip. Range of motion exercises should begin within a few days of surgery. For the rear limb, we're going to put the hock, the knee, and the hip through their range of motion. Notice that firm pressure is applied through range of motion. Each joint is flexed and extended to its maximum extent. There is no jerking involved. For the front limb, we're going to put the wrist, the elbow, and the shoulder through their range of motion. Range of motion exercises should be performed three times daily for 10 to 15 repetitions in each joint. The goal of these exercises is to stretch tissue and increase joint range of motion. These exercises are uncomfortable but should not be painful. If your dog shows a physical response to the exercise such as wriggling, then you are applying the right amount of pressure. If your dog cries, you are being too forceful and need to apply less pressure during range of motion. Range of motion exercises can be performed either with your pet standing or lying. In all cases, there should be a second person available to hold your dog's head since range of motion exercises can cause discomfort. The incision should be monitored daily. If there is discharge noted, please contact the surgery department. Swelling and bruising are common after surgery. Icing the incision can help to alleviate pain and reduce swelling. Your dog's incision can be iced using a store-bought ice pack, a bag of frozen vegetables or ice cubes in a Ziploc bag, or wrapped with a thin towel. Icing can be performed for 10 minutes two to three times a day. Hot packing can be used to decrease lower limb swelling that is common in the few days following surgery. Deep tissue massage is also useful. It should resolve in a few days. To make a warm compress, a wet washcloth can be placed in a microwave for a few seconds and then put in a Ziploc bag. A thin towel should be placed between the skin and the heat source to prevent thermal injury. Warm compresses can be applied to the incision two to three times a day for 10 or 15 minutes. Following surgery, an Elizabethan collar or lampshade will be placed on your dog. It is designed to prevent your dog from licking the incision. Licking the incision can cause infection by introducing bacteria into the wound from the tongue. 
In addition, we're concerned about the trauma caused by the leaking causing wound breakdown. The Elizabethan collar can be removed to allow your dog to eat but should be replaced immediately upon finishing. Do not walk away from your dog while that collar is off. Occasionally bandage of a limb is required after surgery. If your dog is sent home with a bandage it is very important to keep the bandage clean and dry. If the bandage extends to the foot a plastic bag or special boot should be applied to cover the foot when your dog is taken outside to prevent the bandage from getting wet or dirty. The cover should be removed when returned inside. If the bandage becomes wet or dirty, if slippage is noted, or if there is an odor, or if your pet starts chewing the bandage, please contact the surgical department as the bandage will need to be removed or at least changed. Week 2. During the second week, Activities should be restricted as during week one. Range of motion exercises should be continued, but warm packing the joint prior to exercise will help relax the tissues, making it more comfortable to perform these exercises. Icing should be continued to be performed after passive range of motion exercises. The Elizabethan collar should still be used, as should the sling. The correct order is warm compress, leash walk, range of motion exercises, then ice pack. At the two week recheck an examination is performed to assess wound healing and weight bearing. It's important that the patient is at least toe touching at this time in order to minimize joint stiffness and muscle atrophy. Provided there are no problems noted at your recheck, your dog can then move on to the next phase of the recovery. The Elizabethan collar can be removed at this time. Observe your dog carefully as some patients may still lick their incisions at this time and need the Elizabethan collar on longer. Provided your dog is ambulating well, the sling is no longer necessary except on stairs and on slippery surfaces. Weeks 2 to 4. Walks can gradually be increased to 20 minutes 2 to 3 times a day. Start with 10 minute walks and increase them by 1 to 2 minutes every 2 or 3 days until 20 minute walks are achieved. If at any point you notice increased lameness or regression after a walk, rest your dog for 24 hours, then try again. Stairs and slippery or rough surfaces should be avoided. No off-leash activity or playing with other dogs is allowed. Passive range of motion exercises can be continued. Warm compresses can be continued, but icing is no longer necessary. Weight shifting exercises to help improve limb strength can be performed at this time. To perform these exercises, your dog should be standing. Gently push on the opposite hip to load the surgical limb. Alternatively, the normal limb can be lifted off the ground to force static weight bearing on the affected limb. These exercises can be performed for two to five minutes, two to three times a day. Dancing with your dog is a useful way to encourage weight bearing on the affected limb. You need a non-slippery surface and you must be careful to do this slowly to avoid further injury. You should consult with your surgeon to ascertain when it is safe to do this exercise. Patients with generalized hindquarter weakness due to spinal or orthopedic disease or injury are not candidates for this exercise. Weeks four to eight. Walks can gradually be increased to 20 minutes three times a day. If you notice any soreness or increased lameness on these walks, shorten them until the lameness resolves. Weight shifting exercises should be continued. Sit to stand exercises can be performed for 10 to 15 repetitions two to three times a day. Hill climbs and walking through tall grass can be beneficial to improve coordination and strength. Eight week recheck. Limb function and range of motion exercises are assessed. At this time, depending on the procedure performed, radiographs may be taken to assess bone healing. If bone healing is complete, the patient can move on to the next stage of recovery. If bone healing is incomplete, the exercise may need to be restricted for another two to four weeks until further radiographs show completed bone healing. Weeks 8 to 12. Unlimited leash walks are allowed. Walks on a longer leash are also permissible. Running, jumping or playing with other dogs is still not allowed. Hill climbs, walking through tall grass or over rough surfaces, swimming, 
and slow stair climbing on a leash will help improve muscle mass and range of motion. The longer your dog walks, the stronger he or she will get. Walking on very soft surfaces such as sand or thick mulch is excellent exercise at this stage. Weeks 12 to 16. Short periods of off-leash activity are allowed. Begin with a 15 to 20 minute walk to release some energy before allowing 5 minutes of off-leash activity. Do this twice daily. Each week, increase the off-leash period by 5 minutes. Week 16. The key to a good result is a gradual return to normal function. Start with light running using a leash. Make use of an extender leash or a long rope or a wire threaded between two trees with a leash attached to it. As your dog gains strength, you can begin off-leash activity. It's important to monitor your dog's function during this time. If you see signs of increased lameness, you're doing too much too soon and you need to back off. If you're not seeing signs of increased lameness, then it's important to push your dog in order to regain strength. By the end of this two month transition period, your dog should be back to normal function. At the time of discharge, a written version of these instructions will be given to you and a surgical technician will go over them and answer any questions that you have. This video is available on our website, www.animalerc.com.